Hey everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Var Commons. We are doing Nanami and Akito's path. And uh, as you can see, well, we've still been having difficulties getting along. We're thinking about splitting up and picking new partners. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Cancel the partnership and form a new pair. It was always in the back of my mind, but I had felt that I shouldn't choose that option. It felt like I would be running from my sins, and I was trying to avoid the consequences of my actions. That's why I confronted him and tried to find some way I could help him. But instead, that was all a mistake. My handcuff isn't making any noise. It's Shukuri. I reattached the chain. His breathing changed. From rough and haggard to steady and normal. Why? Why did you come? Don't worry. I'll do my best not to touch you. I'm also looking down, so you won't have to see my face. If this doesn't work, I'll wear a bag. I didn't mean it like that. I've said so many cruel things to you, but you still came to find me. I... I became your burden because I was hoping that I could find something to do to help you. However, I was just being impudent. There's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry, Shukuri. Did you... did you always hate your own power? Did you live your life hating yourself? Did you live thinking that you could die at any moment? You took away something precious of mine. You're a cold-hearted human. As long as you get paid, you steal precious things from others. You don't feel any regrets or have a conscience. You just live on and on and forget about everyone you took things from. The worst, lowest, most vile woman. That's how you should be. You don't have to try and make up for anything. I just... I just don't want to know anything more about you. Let's just stop being paired up. The final statement. Those were the most kind and peaceful words of rejection I'd ever heard. I agree. It's morning already. Yeah. I'll tell them that we're splitting up. You go pair up with Otomaru, got it? Okay. Oh. I suddenly realized something. I'm not being yanked around at the chain. Shukuri has slowed down. He's matching my pace? You sure? Did you check the roof? Yeah, I checked everywhere. What? Did something happen? What? Did something happen? Hey, what's going on? Akito, Nanami, it's Mikoto. Have you guys seen Mikoto? Mikoto, no, I haven't seen her. Why, what's wrong? Damn, Mikoto is missing. <laughs> Hiyoko time. Double check all the places you already looked. If you find anything, report back to us. A bright blue sky. The flower petals that float in the wind. The scenery is the only thing that never changes. I don't see them. Let's go check the back. The last time I saw Mikoto was last night. Nijo was the one who noticed she was missing this morning. And... Moroboshi isn't here either. As far as I know, there's no connection between the two. They weren't paired up, and prior to that, they were on different teams. I've never even seen Moroboshi hang out with Mikoto. I wonder where the two of them went, and why. Those two are the ones who are missing. The anxiety crashes down upon me like relentless waves. Even though the ship is freaking huge, there's still a limited amount of space here. If we've been searching this long, it must mean they're not on the ship.
A broken wall. There's a hole in the wall that's just large enough for a person to fit through. As someone who almost fell through this hole, I'm very aware that someone could exit this way. If Akito hadn't helped me that one time, I wouldn't be here right now. Let's focus our search around here. Why? You're thinking the same thing, aren't you? If they're not on the ship, then they probably fell from here. I don't want to think that. I... I don't want to think that. I understand that you don't want to, but there's no other explanation I can think of. You were pretty close with Mikoto, huh? Mikoto found a way to be kind to even someone like myself. She looked after me. It doesn't mean that they're dead. We haven't found corpses or anything yet, so... Corpses? Uh, um, I mean, uh, she can create barriers or something, right? Oh, that's right, Mikoto's barrier power. Her protective barriers that allow her to be resistant to any attack. Thanks to her barrier power, we were able to survive the attack. Someone with a power like that wouldn't die so easily. <laughs> Although, Moroboshi... Oh. Well, you figure if they both disappeared at the same time, they're probably together. Plus, he kind of seems like the type of guy that survives someone trying to kill him, right? He does give off that aura. He's not trying to comfort me. He's just speaking his thoughts out loud. But what he said makes me happy. I need to hear someone say those words right now. There's nothing here. Let's go somewhere else. Yeah. I should have been more careful. Careful of what? A lot of things. You don't actually think that it's your fault those two are missing, do you? It's like you said, they probably fell through the hole. I almost fell in there. I should have warned everyone how dangerous it was. <sighs> are you an idiot? I'm not an idiot. Everyone else knew about the hole up here. Even without a reminder, it's obvious that it's dangerous just by looking at it. There's no way anyone could fall off by accident, unless they were really out of it. Yeah, the way she was earlier. I almost fell off. Although it was mostly because I wasn't feeling well, but it's a possibility. Well, that time I was... Look, the point is, stop feeling guilty for something so ridiculous. You're going to wither and die early if you're thinking you're responsible for stuff like this. It's odd that he would say such a comforting thing to me, when I know he hates me. What are you laughing about? I wasn't expecting you to say something like that. I see now. He is a truly kind person. He'd even go so far as to help the person that he hates the most. I need to be careful. I don't want to take anything the wrong way. Yeah, well, I wasn't ever expecting to see a look like that on your face. Huh? huh? What look? Crap. Nothing. Don't worry about it. What is this feeling? My chest hurts. Um... Huh? Eee! Oh. What was that for? All I did was talk to you. You didn't talk to him, you shrieked at him. <laughs> what is it, Ichinose? Yuiga gave me the key to the handcuffs. We took the key from Ichinose and unlock the handcuffs. We finally remove the cuffs, and we're free from our bonds. Now there's nothing forcing us to stay together. I'll just hold on to these handcuffs. There's nothing good that can happen if Yuiga gets them back. How's Kakeru doing? He still has a fever, but Koharu's taking care of him. Yuiga's paired up with her, so everything should be fine. Once he... Once he was done slurring his words, Ichinose left us. When he mentioned Yuiga being paired with Koharu, I thought I saw his pupils twitch. Ichinose hates Yuiga. Maybe that's why. Now we're finally free. Yeah. We should leave this area. There's no reason for us to stay here. We didn't find anything on the roof, 
I wonder if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us. Now that I think about it, I feel like Mikoto mentioned something about the roof before. I have already set a barrier around the ship. I will admit, I have never had to enclose an object this big before, so the barrier across the roof is thinner than I would like. Putting it another way, so as long as the roof is defended, no attack can touch us. Mikoto always had the barrier around the ship. Even on the roof here. Hey, why do you always just stand in place all of a sudden? Hurry up! Hey, what are you doing? I took my kunai and threw it towards the sky. It flew up, but it didn't reach where I was aiming. Gravity overtook the kunai's acceleration, and it clattered back to the floor. What on earth are you thinking? That's freaking dangerous! I swear I can never figure out what's going on in your head. It's no use. I can't reach it with the kunai. What? Mikoto's always protecting the ship for us. If she's still alive, then the barrier should still be in place too. I was trying to confirm it by hitting it with the kunai, but I couldn't throw it far enough. I need to find somewhere closer. This ship has many windows, but none of them can actually be opened for safety reasons. I need to find somewhere that the kunai can reach. Ah! I returned to the area with the hole. I tossed the kunai at my target. The kunai flew through the hole, then stopped abruptly in the air and dropped. That sound just now. The kunai hit something, right? Probably. And that means the barrier is still up. Yes. We can't say that it's certain. Let's slap Kakeru away and try some more tests. He can probably find the barrier easily with his ivy. We headed back down to the first floor and told everyone else. Yuega looked like he was feeling miserable, but he quickly came with us to check after we talked. The barrier was indeed still up. Even with its owner missing, it was still protecting the ship. This sounds just like her. Even in a situation like this, she'd still try and protect others. The barrier will exist as long as Mikoto is safe. We may as well consider the barrier as part of her. It's essentially proof she's alive. However, I recall her saying that the further away she is, the more difficult for her it is to maintain the barrier. So while the barrier being up means she's alive, the barrier falling doesn't mean she isn't. It may just mean she's too far away to maintain it. I see. Well, if that's the case, let's try landing. There may be some people there who saw something. Uh, I can't believe I didn't notice something so obvious. I'm a terrible childhood friend. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're not the only ones you're concerned about, Mikoto. Nanami, thank you. Don't mention it. Nijo is always smiling, but he looks really distraught right now. Mikoto must mean so much to him. I'm worried about Mikoto and Ron, of course. But, I'm also concerned about Nijo. Well, thanks to you, we know that she's alive now. That should make things a little easier. If you hadn't figured that out, he'd probably be a totally emotional wreck right now. You did everything you could, so you better not even be feeling a tiny bit guilty right now. You are the reason I figured everything out. If you didn't mention Mikoto's barrier, I probably wouldn't have made the connection. Even if I didn't say anything, you still had all the pieces in your head. You were able to put them together because you really cared for Mikoto, and you were thinking about her. I didn't do anything at all. Even still, thank you, Shukuri. Stop being grateful to me. How disgusting. Okay. My chest... pain again. <sighs> You know what? We haven't even eaten yet. Come on, let's go get some food. Food? <laughs> I'm hungry. Well, are you sure you're a girl? Girl's stomachs do not growl like that. 
It's because you mentioned food. I couldn't hold it back anymore. <sighs> Whatever, let's go. Usually, Shukuri would briskly walk ahead, and I would just be staring at his back. But now Shukuri is walking right beside me. It's almost as if... as if we're still chained together. I glanced at my wrist reflectively, but of course the chain is no longer there. Well, maybe the chain trained him. <laughs> and yet for some reason, Shukuri is still right beside me at this moment. It's not that I find this unpleasant, it's just that he would normally hate being in a situation like this. There's nothing unpleasant about this right now. If anything, I'm almost joyful. Joyful? What am I thinking? You don't have to force yourself to match my pace. Huh? I'm not trying to match. It hit me all of a sudden. We were supposed to have gotten new partners this morning. The morning's events made us forget our situation, but... Shukuri still detests me. He's probably still looking to distance himself from me right now. Something in my chest feels a twinge. A similar pain to the one I felt when Shukuri was being nice to me. I wonder if... This feeling... Is it sadness? Sadness caused by Shukuri hating me. The twinge in my chest struggles to evolve. I've never felt anything like this before. I fully deserve all the hatred that Shukuri has for me. I can't be feeling sad about this. The twinges in my heart began to die down as I once again recalled my past wrongdoings. I was relieved that I was able to control my emotions. This is how it is. This is how it has to be. The ship changed course in order to prepare for touching down tomorrow. Once we've landed, we'll begin searching for Mikoto and Moroboshi on land. Koharu was right next to me. We could have slept in separate rooms since there's an extra bed at the moment, but... Koharu is also fairly shaken up by Mikoto's sudden disappearance. I wonder how Mikoto is doing. She must have it rough right now, without anyone to talk to about what she's going through. We've got to find her fast. This place is... So, you think we'll find something? No, there's nothing out of the ordinary here. I see. Otomaru and Kagami. Oh, it's Nanami. Whoa, what are you doing here? Hey, aren't you the one who called her here? Hmm, maybe I made a mistake because I'm not used to it yet. Well, what's up with that outfit anyway? You look super cute, and we're all dressed differently from usual. What's going on? Oh, they're relics of dreams I kept around so I can play with them later. My head starts to feel odd. The things they're discussing aren't making any sense to me. What is this? Is this a dream? Yes, indeed. Hurry on and go home. This isn't your dream. I started walking straight towards where Kagami was standing. I was still in a fog. My mind was clouded, and I couldn't think straight. They're... Ichinose and Koharu. No, he's not a Hyoko in this one. Koharu is in her usual outfit, but Ichinose was wearing a strange outfit, as was I. They haven't noticed me. Ichinose doesn't seem to notice anything at all aside from Koharu. Do you like him? I can never go against him. Whatever I do, I can't win. But I really like... I wonder what they're talking about. What a strange dream. After walking for a little bit, I came across a small river. I should try and do something about this daze I'm in. I won't wash my face. Oh well, it's just a dream anyways. No point in worrying about mistakes and dreams. Oh. Shukuri. What are you doing here? Those pointy ears. They're obviously not the ears of a human. He had something fluffy looking draped around his neck. D don't look at me. I didn't choose to be dressed like this, you know. 
Once I woke up, I was dressed like this. The ears won't come off no matter how hard I pull. Damn it all. So cute. I want to touch them. It's just a dream, right? I don't have to hold back at all. Hey, don't come near me. What the? <laughs> oh, so fluffy. What are you doing? Stay back. It feels really nice. Anything with the ears! It, it's super ticklish there! No. So cute. Uh, <laughs> How dare you do this to a man? You can't wear an outfit like that and still call yourself a man. <laughs> That's mean to not me! <laughs> ah, d damn you! There he goes. This is all a dream, so that Shukuri had to be a dream too. What a weird dream. Come to think of it, this forest looks like the one from before. A thick, dense fog. The smell of greenery was so rich, it almost felt like moss was growing in the air. I chase after the person while the chill winds blow in the early morning. Why? Why would you do such a thing? Did they tell you to do it? You think messing with people's memories is okay? How could you? You have no right! Give it back! Turn it back to normal! That was mine! My precious... <laughs> I've replayed this scene many times in my dreams. Everything about that moment, the cold air, the rich scent of the forest, the painful agonizing scream that shears my heartstrings, it's all etched into my memory. Hey, you better not get carried away. Ch chukuri Don't you dare say my name so casually. I was just being kind to you as a joke. Don't tell me. You better not think that I actually forgave you or something. I wasn't thinking that at all. Whatever. I know I can't trust you. I'm not... I know that what I did to you... It... It isn't something I can undo. It's something that can never be forgiven. Damn right. Uh. Suddenly, he grabs a hold of my neck. Due to his overwhelming strength, I'm unable to breathe. I didn't have the urge to resist him. Not because this was a dream, but because this is the way it should be. Of course Shukuri wants to kill me. This... This is all I can do to repay him. <laughs> pain was familiar to me. I've had my neck grappled like this by someone in my distant past. If I resisted, I'd be forced back down, and as if someone was putting a curse on me, he'd bellow in a deep voice. The only one who can make the best use of your powers is me. Only me! Father! Shiranoi! <laughs> Hey, are you okay? There's two Shukuris. The normal Shukuri in his uniform, and the Shukuri with ears. Which is real. Are they both fake? Is that me? What is going on here? That's what I want to ask you. Didn't you want to kill this girl? This girl, the only one who stole something precious to you. Don't you hate her? Don't you want to kill her? I am you. I'm helping you get the thing that you want most. Stand aside, let me finish this. No way. Stop trying to imitate me, you stupid knockoff. You are not me. Be gone. Damn, what the heck was that? Hey, Shinui, you alright? Uh. You have marks on your neck now. What are you supposed to do for something like this? Uh, you want me to ice it? I guess you can't speak yet. Wait up, I'll call someone over and... I grab the hem of Shukuri's shirt as he tries to stand up. I'm having dreams that are so convenient to me. I can't believe you would save me. This is the second time. Back when I almost fell off the ship too, he reached out for me. 
I deserved to die for what I did to him, and yet for some reason he... Back then, I was stunned because I couldn't figure out why he would do such a thing. But since I'm in a dream right now, I'm able to stay calm and press him for an explanation. Such an overly convenient dream, but I'm really joyful. If I'm in a dream, I might as well allow myself to indulge in a bit of joy. Shukuri is kind, although he's very blunt and his kindness is difficult for others to really see. He's very warm and his kindness is comfortable to me. I felt this kindness for a while now. We were paired up, and now that Shukuri started showing me his kindness, I... I might like... I should probably stop here. Even in a dream, this type of thinking is inappropriate. It's not a dream. It's not a dream. What? This is my room. I woke up from my dream. Something must be wrong with me if I'm having strange dreams like that. Shukuri. Shukuri. That guy wasn't me. What? Wait. Were we seeing the same dream? If so, that was no ordinary dream. It might have been someone using their power. That guy wasn't me. That's what Shukuri just said to me. But which one was he referring to? Shukuri in his uniform, or Shukuri who was wearing the strange outfit? I... Damn it. I don't think that it's all your fault. What was up with that dream? Why didn't you resist? Are you seriously okay with being killed by me? Why does it seem like you're suffering? What... what do you want me to do? <laughs> Shukuri wouldn't answer me. After a little while, he left the room. I can still feel the sensation of his arm on my body. I thought of that strange dream until morning. Two people seeing the same dream is unthinkable. It must be due to someone's power. But I don't have any idea whose power it is. I feel like I met people in the dream. But my memory is hazy, and I can't remember who. I'm curious as to who was behind this dream, but there's no way I can ask around about something like that. So I decided that I'll just keep it to myself. Hey, don't you think we should put in a little more sugar? This needs to have more nutritional content. No, bad! Stop that! Don't you dare add anything else to the food. Ah, oh, fine. Hey, Otomaru, I think we've got things covered in the kitchen, so go wipe off the table. Okay. And Shionanoi, why don't you serve the food? What about adding the herbs? <sighs> hey, listen. You eat a lot when I cook because you like my cooking, right? Yeah. So why do you want to change the way the food tastes by adding a bunch of weird stuff? It's not weird. Herbs are good for your body. I'm already balancing the nutritional content of the food when I cook it in the first place. Or are you saying you have a complaint about my cooking? And here we're supposed to choose. I am. I am. Fine then. Let's hear your complaints. Your dishes are too extravagant. If we keep eating such delicious food, we won't be able to go back to emergency rations. You idiot. Shukuri creates a fist and lightly taps my head with it. Ow. The reason my dishes are delicious is that Kakiru and everyone grow the vegetables with lots of love. We can only enjoy this stuff here. Besides, we won't go back to emergency rations. Who cares if we get used to this? True. Hey, we're good to go over here. Can we start calling everybody over? Yeah, let's warm up the miso soup again. It seems like Akito has a different vibe now. You think you could stay partnered up? I am not sure. I think we'll be fine as long as Shukuri is okay with it. What about you, though? Huh? Do you prefer to stay with Akito? I intend to follow what Shukuri says, 
so what I want doesn't matter. However, if Shukuri says we don't have to separate, I'd be really happy, but that's just a what-if scenario. I'd be so happy my chest might start hurting again. We'll land in the city a little past noon, then we'll start gathering any information from witnesses about Mikoto and Muroboshi. I'm going to discuss things with the world. It might be busy for a while, but please wait until I get back. Okay, and before we start talking about what's going on in the city, I'll go ahead and break this video here, and continue on in the next one. So, I hope to see you in my future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.